All right, baby, I am here today to show you the best five exercises when it comes to building absolute mass on your back. Now, a big back is the foundation to a big squat, bench, and deadlift. So, if your back is lacking, you are seriously missing out on some big gains. It's time to grow some wings. Let's get this, baby. We're talking about building absolute mass and thickness and density on your back. We have vertical pulls and horizontal pulls. We've got pulls this way, and we've got pulls this way. You can manipulate the angles along the way, right? But the principle is we're doing heavy pulls. Because if you want to build mass on your chest and your shoulders, the best way, heavy pressing. Your back, the best way, heavy pulling. Less fancy shit, something about just jumping up on a bar, being a big dude, and just being able to pull yourself up. Because we know you can all pull yourself off, but can you actually pull yourself up on a chin-up bar? That is the question. And welcome back to your mum's favorite channel on YouTube, Cult Strength. Now, today we have a tutorial video yet again. Today, I am going to show you the top five exercises you can do to build absolute mass on your back. I'm talking about building a back like a barn door. It's gonna be wild. Now, these are obviously, in my opinion, the best five exercises that you can do. Now, let me, let me say this, right, because I put a video up a little while ago. It was called Big Back, Big Bench, right? And I gave you the best back building exercises for building a big bench press. So let's get context in mind here, right? Now, that video was, you know, designed with someone who has the bench press as their main priority, right? Just like how I program for a bench press. For example, if you've run the, you know, the Barbarian bench program or the Behemoth program, you will see that the back exercises in there may not be exactly the same as what you see here, right? We have to understand that if we're trying to build a big bench press and then at the same time we're doing the absolute biggest mass builders for your back, that's going to take quite a toll on your central nervous system, right? So we have to shift the priorities a little bit. So those programs, the way the back exercises are put into them, it is to give you a bigger, stronger back while still maintaining the priority of building a big bench press. The difference with this though is that if your goal here, your absolute priority is to pack on as much muscle and mass as you can onto your back in the quickest time possible, these are your best bang for buck mass builders and they are undisputed, all right? These are the big boys, the heavy hitters, and I'm gonna talk you through each one of them and I'll sort of tell you again how you can implement them into your program with reps and sets, etc. And obviously I'll show you how to execute them the correct way to maximize your gains. So I hope that part is clear, all right? So this is designed for someone who has said, okay, I understand that a big back means I'm gonna have a big bench. And you know, it also means you're gonna have a big deadlift and a big squat. Your back is your base. When we're bench pressing, that is what we're laying on. That is our base of power, right? That is our stability. When we squat, that is the shelf that you sit the bar upon. And if that isn't big and strong, we're really limiting how much you're gonna be able to squat. And when it comes to a fucking deadlift, man, we use our back to shift that weight off the fucking ground, right? We need a big, strong back. And these five exercises are the ones that are gonna fast track you to a bigger back. So then you can apply that with your other training and become a fucking monster. You know what I'm saying? But we're gonna start now. We'll get into the first exercise. Let's get this. All right, now the first exercise that I'm gonna show you and demonstrate for you, one that you have most definitely heard of and most likely done before. The question is, are you applying it correctly? Are you doing it correctly? We'll have to find out, right? Now this one, the very simple barbell row, a bent over barbell row, okay? Now, this is, I'll be honest with you, this one and the second one I'm gonna show you today, they would be, I would call them the heavy hitters, right? Of back building exercises. Now, I'm not saying there's a particular order in my favorite to least favorite in this video, but the first two I'm gonna show you are the fucking heavy hitters. There is no joking around. These can be absolutely brutal and absolutely fucking incredible for building absolute mass on your back. I'm talking about thickness, 
and density. You want to be wide and you want to be thick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Mums love it. Mums love it. But how do we execute this movement? Well, yes, we want to remain somewhat strict, okay? We're not trying to be sloppy with our form because a lot of people tend to overreach with the barbell row and it does highly increase your risk of injury, okay? And also, you may not be maximizing your gains, right? What we want to focus on here again is full range of motion. We're not doing short, choppy movements. You know, when we're doing this movement, we're not doing it like this, right? It's going to be full stretch position, full contraction. Now, in saying that, there's going to be a little bit of movement through my torso um, as, I'm, as I'm pulling the bar. There's going to be a small amount of movement, but it's nothing excessive. It's still relatively strict. All I'm doing is allowing myself to move through a full range of motion. And to do that, sometimes we need a little bit of wiggle room with our torso movement, but not excessive. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. And the exercise after this, if we can say, I don't know if this is the right way to say it, but that's the one you can send a little bit more than this one. You'll have to wait and see though. But for a barbell row, let's go over the quick setup, all right? We want to use, I would say a grip similar to your bench press grip, but it doesn't have to be quite as wide. I might bring mine in to around my close grip bench press grip. Okay, that's a comfortable position for me. It's not too wide because we still want to have a decent range of motion. We don't want to be too short with this movement. We want to have our arms nice and long, okay? Because when we're in the bent over position here, what we want is for our shoulder blades or our scaps to essentially protract and open as then we row it up, we retract our shoulder blades, right? So retraction to protraction. That's kind of the movement that we want here. So if our arms are too wide, we're not gonna get that movement through the shoulder joint and the scaps that we're after here. I'll do five repetitions and then we'll chat a little bit more about it. Keeping in mind my stance is exactly the same as my deadlift stance, okay? And it's gonna be definitely more of a push back with the hips and the arms come down here so the barbell is directly under your shoulders, okay? We don't want our legs too stiff. We don't want our knees too bent so the bar's getting in the way of our knees. Think about straight shins and the barbell directly under our shoulders. Five reps, 140 kilos, 308 pounds on the bar. All right, baby, so there is a set of barbell bent over rows. Now, as you can see, I'm getting a full stretch and a full contraction, which is extremely important when it comes to building mass because we're gonna build the most amount of mass when we're working through that full stretch position, right? So as I've even said in the past for people who do partial movements, there's no point doing them at the top. Better off having full stretch and doing your partials through that range. That is where you're gonna get the most metabolic damage which means the most potential to grow muscle. Now, where would you implement these in a program? Well, okay, let's say you're running the, the, the Barbarian or the Behemoth, and you don't have these bent over rows in the program because there's a lot of seated rows, like pull downs, et cetera, and single arm cable rows. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you do this movement with that program, but if you were so inclined and you wanted to, that's fine, okay, it might work for you, but for me, it would be a bit too much. In saying that, the higher up the strength curve you are, the more you need to regulate your accessories and your load in your accessories, right? But you could implement that and swap that out for a seated row or even your single arm cable rows if you are so inclined. Alternatively, if you're wanting to really work on your back a little bit extra, you could do them after your deadlifts. Now I say that because we're already loading our spine on a deadlift day or a squat day, but this is more of a deadlift pattern pull, right? So after a deadlift could be a good time to do bent over rows because you've already warmed up, you've already loaded your spine. I don't always recommend loading your spine more days in the week than you need to because that is what really, I guess, drives up your central nervous system fatigue. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna do one more demonstration for you in a moment. So you can see from the other side, and again, pay attention to execution, 
my range of motion, which is the most important thing with this, before load, right? It's great to want to lift heavy, and these I've designed to do heavy, but you must develop the technique, you know what I mean, and the motor pattern first. So don't go crazy into it. With your repetitions and stuff like that, when you're learning the movement, it's always good to start, you know, eight, eight reps, maybe 10 reps. I wouldn't go higher than that. I'm doing fives today. This is an excellent compound movement to do sets of five with. It's a, a good rep range to move a good amount of weight, uh, which is gonna allow you to build a good amount of mass. Because for example, the way you might use these in a program, especially the first two movements is, these could be the foundation of your back training. The first exercises you do when you get to the gym for your back training, if you're just going to the gym and hitting back by itself, you would start with a heavy compound movement like this before moving on to your machine rows, your single arm rows, and things like that. So an excellent way to have a, a, an excellent foundation for your back training, these movements are. So we'll get a shot from the other side. We'll do another set. Five more reps. Remember, the barbell's directly under the shoulders. That's the best place for it to be. That'll be kind of over the center of your gravity. So again, you're reducing your risk of injury. The barbell's too far forward. We're putting our lower back at an increased risk. We don't need to do. Five more. Five. We'll take a moment. We'll come back and we'll hit exercise two, which is a heavy fucking hitter. It's a good one. Let's go. Also, like this video, drop a comment and subscribe. You're the best. All right, guys, we're moving on to the second variation now. Now, this is a pendulum row, and I quickly wanted to touch on something before we start. So, what these have in common with the bent over row is that they're extremely good at building density through the middle of your back. And what I mean is up the erectors in your spine. Now, the difference is with these movements is we're not having a chest support or any other support or assistance with the movement, we're having to rely on bracing through our core and using our erectors to stabilize our back when we do this movement to make sure that we're not folding or bending too far. So this is an added benefit to this movement is especially your lower back erectors, they're gonna get reinforced extra pump and extra strong by doing these movements. And when done correctly, that is extremely beneficial in staying healthy in the long term as well. When it comes to squatting heavy and deadlifting heavy, we really want to have a really strong lower back that is reinforced with a lot of muscle. So these are excellent for that, but we must make sure we treat them with respect and do it properly because when done wrong, obviously heavy compound movements, things can go bad. Now, the difference with a pendlay row and a barbell row, bent over row, is it's a very similar movement. They're both bent over rows. The pendlay row is more of an explosive overload row. So we're starting off the ground and we're using what we'll call a little bit of body English, a little bit of momentum with the body to help generate force to move slightly heavier weight typically. So we might use the pendlay row in a sense to overload from the barbell row. So instead of overloading your barbell row to the point where your technique starts breaking down a bit, I recommend learning to do a pendlay row as your form of overloading your back to enforce or to force more growth. Now, I'm gonna give you a demonstration of the pendlay row because you may not be as familiar with this. It is a badass exercise and it's also got an excellent carryover, I feel, to the deadlift and your explosiveness off the ground. In saying that, it's not the same movement pattern, no, but what it does with your lats and how you can learn to engage them you know, really explosively and really powerfully is it does give you a lot of strength and confidence with your upper back when it comes to bracing for your deadlift and initiating force off the ground very quickly, which relies heavily on extremely good stabilization of the upper back. All right, we'll do another five reps. We'll go 140. I might do another set after this. We might go a little bit heavier and I'll show you, you know, how it's done a little bit heavier with a bit more body English, but same setup and hand position, very similar to the bent over row. So I'll use the same hand position essentially. Now what we're doing from here is we're starting from the ground and I'll be pulling it up into my, into my rib cage, into my stomach here where I'd row the bar into. 
then it goes straight back to the ground, okay? So there's no holding through this range here, which is why I mean you could potentially overload this a little bit more and go a little bit heavier, but you're required to use a bit of body English or momentum to move the weight. So it's, it's like not a strict movement, but don't take the piss with it either. All right, so there is five reps with a pen lay row. What I'm gonna do is I'll take a moment, I'm gonna put another plate on the bar. We'll do another demonstration of that. And I'll talk about, again, how to implement this in your program. And again, why you should use it. Let's go. All right, gang, so now I'm gonna show you a demonstration with four plates aside. Now also, when it comes to building a big back, right? So you have to have context in what you're doing. So your goal is to build absolute mass on your upper back. So if you're doing barbell rows, bent over rows, pen lay rows, and your grip is what's stopping you from lifting heavier, that's the time and place to wear straps, okay? We're not working on our grip. Your priority is building a big back. If your grip is limiting the weight you can lift, you're limiting the size you're putting on. So instead of doing that, when it comes to you actively training your back, don't be afraid to use straps to obviously help you achieve the load you need to lift to get the gains you're after. It's pretty simple, right? But if your grip sucks, make sure you're doing your grip work by itself separately as well. We don't want to neglect it. Now, when it comes to straps, keep in mind, on my website right now, coltstrength.square.site, you can pre-order your own Colt Strength figure six straps and also the 36 inch wrist straps, the God Killer wrist straps in black and in white. They will be here in the next three to four weeks tops. That is what I've been told. And uh, they're selling really quickly. Remember, I only had 50 pairs of each. They have been selling very quickly and I would not be surprised if they sell out the next few days. Uh, so if you want to get in on the first drop, make sure you order yours now. I wouldn't sleep on it. There will be more stock coming, but I can't tell you when that will be. This is the first order. And if you want in on the first one, well, you know what to do. And also if you want a discount, if you want a 10% discount on your programs, on your merch, on your equipment, become a member of my YouTube channel, the Disciple tier, you will get 10% off all of your orders with me, which will save you money, which is excellent. And I appreciate your support. But right now, baby, I'm gonna do a set of these. We'll go another five repetitions with the straps on a little bit heavier, a little bit more body English, but still an acceptable amount. We are overloading this movement, so strict form isn't as important as with the bent over barbell row. As I said, this is an excellent way to overload that movement in a way I guess that would be less risk of injury than the barbell row per se, bent over barbell row per se. All right. Let's go. And keeping in mind, the entire time I'm doing this, the barbell is directly under my shoulders when I'm bent over, right? It stays in that position. That is a safe position, safest position to pull from. Now, again, with reps and sets, this one I keep lower because I'm using it to overload. So I wouldn't go over six reps. Normally four or five reps for a few sets at the beginning of your heavy back training day will be the best place for this before you maybe move on to two or three sets of bent over barbell rows with eight to 10 reps. That could work really well. We'll take a minute and we've got number three. Let's go. All right, gang. So they are the two biggest heavy hitters when it comes to building absolute mass on your upper back. And now we have three more exercises to show you. But actually, I guess this one, this one I'm gonna combine it with another one because they're essentially the same thing, just a progression and a regression of it, in my opinion. That is a fucking pull up or a chin up and a lat pull down. I say the pull up or the chin up is the 
you know, progressed version of a lat pull down. Most people can't do pull ups, but they can do lat pull downs and you can eventually progress, you know, your strength to the point where you can start doing pull ups and then weighted pull ups, you know, will make it even harder again. But I'm going to give you demonstrations of both because I see them as the same movement, essentially training the same muscles. But again, as I said, progression and regression, not everybody is actually strong enough just yet to do a pull up but you can do lat pull downs until you become strong enough. Now again, with the, I guess the nuance with a lat pull down and a pull up for me is that it definitely affects my shoulders a little bit differently. What I mean by that is on the lat pull down, I can go into a full stretch position at the top with no shoulder pain. When I dead hang off one of these and start trying to do pull ups, I do get a bit of pinching in the shoulder. So I don't quite go into a full hang position with the pull up, but I'll still train my lat pull downs after I do pull ups to make sure that I'm going through that exaggerated range of motion to make sure I'm not neglecting anything. But bang for buck, the pull up does give me a much harder challenge than what the lat pull down does. So I do prefer it when it comes to what is better at building absolute mass. But again, it's a much harder thing to train all the time. And when you're doing a lot of heavy benching, deadlifting, etc., sometimes it's just smarter to do your lat pull downs, you know, for higher reps and sets. But not the point of this video. This video is about absolute mass and pull ups is a fucking excellent one. Very simple again. All you need is a fucking bar to pull yourself up on. It's not fancy, there's no bullshit. And, you know, again, a really good test of someone who is strong. You get a lot of big guys that lift a lot of weights. You know, I'm talking super heavyweight guys. But if those super heavyweight guys can't do a fucking pull up, they're not that strong, okay? The strong ones, and I'm talking about the ones that lift big totals, they can do pull ups. Have you seen a 160 kilo guy do fucking 10 pull ups before? I have, it's impressive. I'm 140 kilos, I can do around 15 or 16 pull ups if I give it everything for one set. Uh, I'd like to get that to 20, but hey, it's a fucking impressive thing when you see someone who's fucking heavy pulling themselves up with ease, okay? I'm gonna do a set of five just to give you a demonstration of how I execute it. And we'll go straight over to the lat pull down and I'll give you another quick demonstration of that for anyone who's not quite sure or unclear. Now you can use different grips here. For my shoulders, I like to use this grip here. If my shoulders are feeling really good, I will go out here, but I feel like it does essentially the same thing for me. I'm not gonna put myself through even more pain and discomfort for the sake of it. That's not really gonna help me. That's just gonna flare my shoulders up. But we'll go here, we'll do five reps. Push. Push. Easy peasy, right? And we'll come over here. And again, that was like, I'm not cutting the reps short. I'm just not hanging all the way and getting a full stretch. Because even with that range, I feel a bit of a pinch through my right shoulder. But when I come over here and I do my lat pull downs, right? I'll just do a set of eight or so. You'll see the difference with the range of motion, the full stretch. But again, working the same muscle groups in the same way. Full stretch. Yep, two more. Easy, right? So, very similar movements. That's why I would call them, or put them in the same category. But again, bang for buck, absolute fucking gold mines when it comes to building absolute mass. If you have any questions about what we've spoken about so far, drop a comment. I'll do my best to reply. Please like this video and uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. We've got two more to go. We'll chat in a sec. All right, baby. Now, before we move on to the next one, we'll just quickly touch on, you know, the rep ranges again for those. It can vary greatly, as I've spoken about before. Lat pull downs can be used from anywhere up to 20 repetitions or more, down to sixes and eights. Although typically, you would see it somewhere in the range of eight to 20, eight to 15. And then you would graduate onto there and start doing some pull-ups. Maybe you'd start with, even if you're starting with singles, doubles, and triples, you want to work your way up, you know, to sets of five to eight, maybe more. And once you've progressed you know, from doing 10 to 12 reps pretty comfortably, maybe you can consider adding some weight and doing weighted pull-ups. But 
You can use that any way you want. You can use it as a progression. You don't even have to do pull-ups. You can overload on that pull-down as well and go really heavy, but I do like using an actual pull-up bar. I do think it's uh, a little bit different and it's a bit more badass, man. Something about just jumping up on a bar, being a big dude and just being able to pull yourself up because we know you can all pull yourself off, but can you actually pull yourself up on a chin-up bar? That is the question. Now, the next, uh, the next big bad boy we got here is a chest supported row. Now a chest supported row can be done on a prone bench, a flat bench like this. I love doing that. I don't have one of those benches here. I'm gonna get one very soon. Or it can be done simply using an incline bench, an adjustable incline bench. So I have it set here at about 45 degrees. And I have dumbbells today because I'm using this bench. If I had a prone row bench, I would use a barbell. It's just a little easier to set up and use with dumbbells for this exact one. But again, you can use a barbell or dumbbells. The most important point is that we have a chest support here. Now, this is different to the bent over rows, as I said. They rely heavily on your erectors to give you support and strength through the midsection, right, when we're bent over. With this movement, we're taking the erectors out of it. We're also taking out any momentum. So you're not using your erectors, okay, which is, again, not a bad thing. We don't always want to use our erectors because they'll get fucking fried. This is an excellent way to keep training your back after you've done perhaps that sort of stuff and you want to continue engaging and working the lats and the rhomboids and things like that, even the rear delts. So, you know, that's the main difference here is that you're isolating the back, the upper back, and you're not using any momentum or the erectors. You're not actually relying on being supported. So you can go, I wouldn't say heavier, because again, you can't cheat with this movement. So it's a bit of a trade-off. But as I said, it's fantastic to use after you've done your more heavy compound movements uh, where you need a bit more strictness or support when it comes to your lower back, etc. We'll do a set now, keeping in mind full range of motion again, full stretch. It's not a very comfortable movement. It's very hard to breathe, but it's excellent at building mass on your back. It's incredible. I'm gonna do just a set of six as a demonstration. Okay, so the way I like to set it up here, I can sort of just reach these. You might need a bit of help when it comes to getting the dumbbells. But we're trying to essentially hang with a full stretch and we're gonna row them up into our ribs or as high as we can. If you had a barbell, the bar would hit the bench and you would hold it into the bench, right? Which is why sometimes dumbbells can be a bit better as well because you're not being restricted. Six reps, nice and easy. And you know, I spoke about where to put them in the program. They're excellent for after the rows and these can be used at any time in your training cycle. It's an excellent movement. This is one of the most fantastic movements you can use when your back building, or your building mass on your back is at number one priority. It can also be used, you know, when you're doing a bench press program and you're wanting to add a, you know, kilos to your bench press this is a movement you can still push really hard, but you're not gonna be able to overload it like you can with the barbell row. So it's better for your central nervous system. And I don't know, that's probably one of the, the, the cool things about this movement is it allows you to work so hard without taxing you so much. As I always say, right? It's not always smarter to go heavier, heavier, heavier. And that's not always the best way to grow either. It's about picking exercises that can give you a desired amount of difficulty, okay, to provide you with the stress that you need to grow because our muscles grow under stress. We still need to work at an intense level, but we can make things more difficult by, you know, changing things like we can't use any momentum with the chest support, or if we're doing tempo work or pause work, etc. cetera, there are ways to make things more difficult without going heavier, which is sometimes good. But yeah, this definitely earns its spot here at number four. We've got one more to go. We'll chat in a second. Let's go. All right, gang, now before we move on to the fifth and final variation, what I wanted to quickly say was that although these are the, in my opinion, the five fucking best movements you can do to build absolute mass on your back, that doesn't mean you have to be doing all of them all the time. My recommendation to you is that you maybe have two to three of these movements in your training cycle at any given time. I wouldn't necessarily be trying to do any more than that, right? That could be a little too much perhaps, right? We need to still recover and think about recovery. So two to three of these at any given time would be perfect. I'm gonna show you the last one now. Do me a favor, like this video, 
drop a comment and subscribe. It means the world to me and it helps me grow this channel. And you know that's what I wanna do. We have merchandise coming really soon. We've got shirts and stuff, obviously the wraps and the straps. And we got programs, squat program dropping, I think in less than a week. I'm currently working on it right now. A lot of you guys got back to me saying you wanted that squat program that would go with the bench press and the deadlift program. They all work together, so that will be fun. But right now we've got seated rows. So again, as you can see by, I guess the layout of these movements, it's like, we've got to think about, these are the five best fucking mass builders, right? They're heavy compound movements, all of them. They're engaging the entire musculature of our upper back and our lower back, some of them as well, right? They're not things like rear delt flies. Although a rear delt fly is excellent for building a rear delt muscle, we're talking about building absolute mass and thickness and density on your back. We have vertical pulls and horizontal pulls. We've got pulls this way and we've got pulls this way. You can manipulate the angles along the way, right? But the principle is we're doing heavy pulls because if you want to build mass on your chest and your shoulders, the best way, heavy pressing. Your back, the best way, heavy pulling. Less fancy shit, focus on moving these sort of, going through these movements with excellent technique, progressing the load as we go. Again, we don't just go and hit the max every week. We progress our load each week. We get, we get better, we get stronger. We program these the same way that we program our squat, bench and deadlift. It's not just a guessing game. We must have a plan. And if you do it correctly, you're gonna be a fucking tank. That's all I'm gonna tell you, boys and mums, of course. I mean, if you wanna be a tank mum, I, I prefer that you don't work out too much, love. Stay natty as well, you know what I'm saying? Maybe because if we don't want you being bigger than me, that would be concerning. Anyway, we'll do 10 reps, seated rows, full range of motion. Think about, you know, what am I doing with my upper back, my shoulder blades, protraction, retraction. That's also really important, right? This isn't short choppy movements, as I say, that is not the way you gain mass. You don't gain mass by overloading the weight and going through a quarter of the range of motion. That is the dumbest shit you could do. Full stretch. Two more. And that is number five on my list. So they are, as I said, the best mass builders when it comes to building absolute mass. So don't get confused between this video and my big back, big bench video was back specific exercises when it comes to the time in your training where building a bench is your priority because we still wanna grow a bigger back but we're focusing on our bench mostly. With these movements, these are back focused movements where you're like, I just really, really wanna spend some time growing a big back and when I do, I'm gonna then bring that newfound strength over to my squat bench deadlift and apply my technique with this new big base that I have. And that's the best way I can put it. It does, it does pay off to spend time working on things like your weaknesses, right? So if your back's really small, get a bigger back. If your triceps are really weak, get stronger triceps. If you have weak hamstrings, get bigger hamstrings, right? It's like, it's good to spend time hammering those weaknesses so they go away faster. Faster they go away, quicker you get stronger. And in the meantime, you're obviously working on your technique. That's important too. But I hope this helps, you know, another tutorial. If there's any other tutorials you wanna see, keep in mind, don't make them too specific. Like, no, I'm not gonna do a whole video on how to do a rear delt fly. But if you can give me some good ideas, I'll do my best to uh, put them into videos and make them educational for you so they can help you, you know, with your training. But until next time, you know what to do? Go to the fucking gym. See you soon.